Hello everyone. In this few slides of presentation, I want to tell you some of the work we are doing in University of Technology Sydney in the space of brain computer interface. Myself is Avinash Singh. I'm a lecturer in School of Computer Science at UTS and uh, my background is a mix of computer science and cognitive neuroscience and my focus of work which I'm presenting in next few slides is mostly around how I can translate fundamental cognitive neuroscience research into a real world application which is generally end up as computer brain computer interface. My work varied a lot in the space of BCI or brain computer interface and when I say varied a lot essentially according to my definition I prefer to call it my work is all about replace restore and enhance human being with brain computer interface potentially I like to say is essentially a future of interaction right so you can see here in the slide uh, interface might be look like a simple brain controlled robot or could be something related to entertainment like a cognitive gaming or even something around human agent teaming where robot and human working alongside to each other so these are some of the example of replace restore and enhance using BCI the work we do in UTS are mostly focused on healthy people, but they all are translatable to the work where it can be applied to people with disabilities or certain disorder as well. So give you a definition of how BCI look like when I work on a uh, very general definition is not too much differ from it. So of course we start with acquiring brain activity or brain signals, right? And we acquire these brain signal when we performing certain experiment or asking participant to expose to very specific phenomena or stimulus so that we can invoke a specific brain activity for instance, a stress or uh, cognitive workload or something like a P300, which we, I'm going to show you in the next few slides. Once we know, of course, we pre-process those signal. With, I'm talking about EEG here, which is electroencephalogram. But even you're dealing with uh, something like a functional MRI or functional near infrared, which is another um, uh, way to record brain activity you have to go through pre-processing as well and then you try to extract feature out of that and that's what we do so we collect the brain data and trying to find specific features relevant to the phenomena we asking participant to expose to once we have enough information once we know what feature they are we simply apply existing machine learning method or custom machine learning method that could be simple as a linear descriptor or SVM support vector machine or some high end like a, a deep learning method as well. This machine learning method essentially what it does they give us a bit of classification if these neural feature are belongs to class A, class B or C or so on. Once we have that information, once we have those labels, we simply translate those labels into commands. What I mean by, let's say, I know based on a brain activity which is relevant to stress, I know if person is suffering from a very high stress or low stress or medium stress, so essentially three class of stress. And so once I know, I just translate and tell a tool or software that there are three category of stress and detected one is maybe medium stress. So once you know that label or classification of stress in this example, you can translate into interface. 
essentially it could be controlling a robot controlling a, a computer or, or or something like a ar vr glasses and or even microphone or headphone or anything really and when you do that of course you are also watching those actions so essentially it become a closed loop sort of interface and this is how a bci look like now you can see here is quite fundamental steps which is quite focused around cognitive neuroscience and of domain knowledge of cognitive neuroscience this part specifically is very much around machine learning or computer science and this part which is creating a interface is very much around system design so it's quite interdisciplinary approach of course to build a bci system but that's the fun of it as well well of course it's not like i talking about few way of recording brain signal there could be really a lot more as well but if i focus on a non-invasive version so you have fmri which is of course um, a big huge machine required couple of uh, uh, office size room we sitting in now or something called magnetoencephalography which is a magnetic property to collect brain activity and then there's a something called these two are expensive uh, product to record brain activity for instance fmri could easily cost you 500 to 1000 dollar for an hour it's of course not so feasible to collect a long or so much brain activity with that uh, for a student project same goes to meg which is expensive and heavy uh, machinery but now in other two and in this side like a f nears it is a functional near infrared spectroscopy it's relatively inexpensive and also smaller in size so this is also very popular especially nowadays becoming more and more popular because it follow a property of F fmri in terms of recording brain signal but maybe not so deep generally we categorize a signal into what we call temporal and special um, resolution so when i say temporal means time voice how fast they can record or when i say special essentially how deep uh, information they can record so fnears is compared to fmri of course temporal is very fast but if i talk about special uh, uh, compared to fmri fnears is not too deep it's still very much on cortex level now we talk about EEG, which is actually one of the most popular device to collect brain signal non-invasively and very, very, very popular among brain computer interface developer or research as well. Why? Because first of all, they are very, very fast, pretty much most fast non-invasive way you can find out there to record brain activity. They are also super inexpensive. You can go from anything from 100 bucks to buy a EEG device to thousands of dollars. So you can see there's a quite of a range in there. And But you can notice it's still very bulky, right? Maybe if you're creating a BCI, you don't want such a bulky thing on your head when you are, go outside on the street or in the real world. So there's an alternate version of EEG as well. We call them dry sensor EEG. Some examples are like that. For example, this this E, which is from our lab in UTS itself, or uh, this C version is called Open BCI. You can build by yourself by buying a sensor online. Or this one, a B, which is called NeuroSky, just costs hundred or two hundred dollar at most. Or if I talk about the A, which is a Emotive a company from Sydney itself. And they are also dry sensors. So they look very cool when you put on your head, of course. And because they look very cool, uh, it's also very good for BCI application. But before you reach at this stage of sensor, you have to understand what part of the brain you have to focus to get the data so that you can create a BCI system. Um, some of the common BCI paradigm I want to give you an example of we have from the lab and there are many many more as well 
for instance this is the one of the work a while ago where um, we collected a data a bci paradigm called ssvep or steady state visually evoked potential which is a phenomena that anytime you look at any flickering screen that flickering frequency of that flickering let's say this is a 15 hertz will also produce in your occipital lobe based on of course your visual cortex and that 15 hertz can be detected by machine learning and can be translated into command now think of same 15 hertz 16 hertz 17 hertz and so on different kind flickering on your screen and you can simply pay attention to the one you're interested in and the robot will take that as a command and execute we call this system our eating assistant system uh, and you can see again we are using a sensor which look like very simple and it's a dry sensor so it does the job pretty nicely for us another in this example we're going to see another DCI paradigm called motor imagery which is essentially a paradigm that imagine your left and right hand movement leg movement or and literally any limb movement and that can be detected by uh, machine learning and that can translate it into a command and because of this imagination of movement of left and right hand we call it motor imagery and this is very popular BCI paradigm out there especially helping people with disability controlling wheelchair uh, uh, and so and so on although it required a lot of training for person or participant to before you can become very good at that but at the same time it can do a lot of things so in this example you're seeing mi or motor imagery is used for controlling drone to go left and right up and down and so and so on which is interesting approach or interesting work and can be translated into a lot of potential application as well like in every other pci paradigm in fact in this video you are seeing is also not just controlling one drone but more than one drone uh, what we call swarm or multi-drone control with motor imagery which is very cool isn't that so that that sort of cool stuff can be done with bci but again you can see this is really a future of interaction where things can be controlled pretty much everything can be controlled with your brain signal alone and a lot of things can be done with that another example which is a bit of a what i prefer to call a passive bci where you don't have to pay attention to anything but your brain data just translate into command based on certain features so for example cognitive load in this video what you're seeing and i would encourage you to follow it what the task is that we are invoking a cognitive load among participant and when they reach a very high cognitive load and that detected by our classifier our machine learning method we intelligently change the view of dots or assist the participant to choose which dot they have to follow we call it intelligent air traffic controller system in this case uh, which is a work we did with the uh, air traffic controller in australia Another example, which is a kind of mix of bunch of different brain computer interface paradigm is in the gaming. So this work, what you're seeing here is essentially a, a work where we're using all kind of BCI paradigm, although this video is shorter. And the goal of this work was to understand how BCI 
can be developed as a skill so for example now you see these dots are flickering which is the example of ssvp i just showed in the previous slide and of course game is well known candy crush we have to just move these blocks these different color matching uh, <coughs> um, gems here and uh, you can play the game other thing you can do in the game so you can see user is also using a mouse to control the game but at the same time at certain point also you has to use a brain signal so for example now user is have to pay a lot of attention to get more stronger power so this is the example of pci again and when the power becomes strong yes, you can continue playing the game and kill the monster of course or if you keep going more um, there's a one more example coming in in a second which is motor imagery where you can think about left and right to play the game but again this might be a uh, example but you can think of playing a game which completely brain controlled or mix of brain and uh, hand control so you can have more control over game as well for example this one you have to think left and right another example of motor imagery so we do this all work here in UTS and and like I say many many more to find a different way to create these interfaces but of course before we reach this stage we also do a lot of fundamental studies and connect all the dots together so that's a quick snapshot of all the work we do in UTS so I want to thank you all the students and colleagues involved in this work with me and of course all the funding agency uh, including Australian Research Council or Defense Innovation Network and so on uh, feel free to reach out if you think I can help you or feel free to reach out if I can answer you or you interested to do something with me thank you for listening